NFL draft has come and gone. The Dallas Cowboys shocked fans with their first pick, and the Houston Texans made a blockbuster trade to take two of the first three players off the board. For more on that and what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's check in with Larry Ramirez. Texans head coach D'Amico Ryan certainly made a splash yes, he did. in his first NFL mm -hmm. draft. Of course, he had some help. So some NFL experts thought the Houston Texans would draft a defender with the second overall pick coming up tonight on Instant Replay. The Houston Texans select... C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. Yeah, with the second overall pick of the 2023 NFL Draft, the Texans drafted their franchise quarterback in C.J. Stroud and then turned and then traded for the third overall pick to draft linebacker Will Anderson Jr. Texas GM Nick Casero will break it down for us. He brought me in to be a big, dominant physical presence on the inside, and this, this is my job to do that. With the 26 overall selection in the first round, the Cowboys grab Michigan defender Mozzie Smith. Micah Parsons loved the choice. The fans will not so much. We've got both of those reactions coming up. I just had uh, the people close to me, family and friends come, you know, support me, man, on this great day. You know, you know, this, this, today's today's been one of the best days of my life, man. Cornerback Jalen Jones from Steele High School was drafted by the Indianapolis Colts. He had to wait until day three to hear his name called. More but Jay coming up. Plus, we got SAFC. Steph Curry sets a Game 7 record. And Kendo Tremendo is ready to box right here in San Antonio. All that and much more coming up on Instant Replay. Covering it all from the football field to the boxing ring. We are busy. And everything in between. Yep. Thanks, Larry. We'll see you in just a bit. All right, coming up, the Witty Museum is starting a new mission to bring culture and knowledge for the next generation. Why they are creating an exhibit about the unknown histories that make up Texas. And a swatting epidemic is sweeping the country. That's when police get fake emergency calls. Active shooter scares in some colleges now making police paranoid. How AI is contributing to the problem. And parts of the country dealing with severe weather this weekend along the Atlantic coast. We'll take you there where a powerful tornado in Miami ripped through the city and tossed cars miles away. Parts of the country from the southeast to the mid-Atlantic are dealing with severe weather this weekend. Florida's Atlantic coast hit by severe storms. And in the Midwest and Northern California, melting snow is raising flooding concerns. ABC's Elwin Lopez shows us the damage from around the nation. A violent weather outbreak wreaking havoc along Florida's Atlantic coast. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. Bringing with it heavy rain and strong winds. I just saw a car flip over in front of me. That's a tornado. National Weather Service oh, Miami man. says this EF2 tornado with winds of up to 130 miles per hour tore through North Palm Beach. Oh my God, oh, it's like right in down. front of it. Oh my God. The powerful storm oh, tossing God. cars. Cars stacked on top of one another in this parking lot. In Palm Beach Gardens, the storm bringing down trees and shattering windows. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, the Mississippi River is expected to crest on Monday, but high water is already covering streets in the Quad Cities. Crucial barge traffic carrying deliveries of items such as fertilizer and grain have already been halted along certain portions of the river. Some locks and dams could remain closed for three weeks. The high water due to a quick melting of a giant snowpack in northern Minnesota that is slowly moving down the river. And in California, a similar situation. Parts of the Sierra received record-breaking amounts of snow this winter. And now Northern California felt record-breaking high temperatures late last week. This sudden warming could cause significant runoff and flooding. Parts of Yosemite National Park temporarily closed amid those flooding concerns, but now have reopened with limited services. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Davenport, Iowa. We now have the names of the three soldiers killed when two helicopters collided during a military training exercise over Alaska. They are Christopher Iramo of New York, Kyle McKenna of Colorado, and Stuart Wayment of Utah. That's according to the Pentagon. The crash happened on Thursday. A fourth soldier did survive the crash, and the military reports he is hospitalized and stable tonight. The Pentagon says the helicopters were returning to Fort Wainwright from a training mission when they collided in midair. An investigation is underway to figure out what happened. Across America now and the rise in so-called swatting cases where police are directed to respond to phony emergencies. More recent cases happening at schools, including here in San Antonio and nationwide. Now officials are saying some of those voices on the calls may be computer generated. 
Across the nation, an alarming increase in so-called swatting incidents or fake emergency calls swamping local police departments. I got an alert from OU that there's an active shooter at the South Oval. Just this month, an active shooter scare at the University of Oklahoma sent officers on an aimless search. The alert has been canceled and they were getting an all clear from the OU campus. And an Indiana college was also victim to a swatting call. The situation there ended up not being real. And as with some swatting cases, neither was the caller's voice. If I say at AR-15, or however, it sounded like he was trying to change his accent. During this school year, so far, the Educators School Safety Network has tracked 414 incidents of false reports in K-12 through alone, including both swatting and accidental calls. And as the number of alarming incidents rises, so do the number of incidents involving the use of artificial intelligence or voice modifications now enabling culprits to instigate from afar and anonymously. These are not, you know, old analog phones that are being used to call these in. This is all voice over the Internet. Um, it's all using AI and, and other tools. In Iowa, authorities say calls were placed alleging threats of violence at a high school. They were very synthesized, very computer-like. Voice on the call artificially generated. The game is always changing. The apps are always changing. Ultimately, a 16-year-old student was charged by authorities for allegedly making a threat of terrorism after police say... He contracted a third party through the dark web to place those calls on his behalf. Authorities taking these threats and the punishment to follow very seriously, and many states even eyeing increases in penalties given the spike in incidents. The penalties both at a state and federal level have increased dramatically. And you now see swatters going to prison for significant periods of time. And the FBI also stressing that these swatting calls are dangerous because, of course, they take first responders away from real emergencies. Heading overseas now to the evacuation of foreigners trapped in Sudan. U.S. officials reporting hundreds of Americans are safe now after fleeing in a convoy escorted by armed drones. A 72-hour ceasefire in place in the war-torn country. Battles breaking out in the capital city of Khartoum, jeopardizing efforts to get people out of the country, including Americans. Under the escort of armed drones, the convoy of buses carried about 300 Americans to Port Sudan from Khartoum. That's about 500 miles. State Department is really pushing for people to leave within the next 24 hours because they're concerned that this uh, very uh, temporary ceasefire is going to expire and they won't be able to bring both sides to another agreement to cease the hostilities. Now, the mass exodus causing chaos at the borders. Those overhead images of the Sudan-Egypt border showing massive lines of buses and crowds of people. That ceasefire comes to an end after tonight. Back here in the States, a big night in Washington last night. The nation's media gathering for the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner. The dinner comes a few days after President Joe Biden announced his run for re-election as president. This year's headliner, Daily Show comedian Roy Wood Jr. But beyond the laughs, Biden hit a more solemn tone, using his remarks to address the importance of press freedoms. The president praising Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich, wrongfully detained in Russia, and freelance journalist Austin Tice, who's been held captive in Syria for more than 10 years. Evan and Austin should be released immediately, along with every other American held hostage, are wrongfully detained abroad. The president last night also recognizing WNBA star Brittany Griner, who was, of course, freed from a Russian detainment after nearly 10 months earlier this year. All right, back here in South Texas, let's go outside with live cam. Temperature 74 degrees. Still have clear skies in place. Hopefully you were able to soak up the sunshine over the past couple of days and enjoyed that comfortable feel thanks to the drier air. Let's take a look at the Almanac data for today. 50 was the low. That's actually 12 degrees below the average for this time of year. The high was 87, four degrees above where we should be for this time of year. Again, all thanks to that drier air. 87 in Gonzales was the high, 91 in Pleasanton, 96 in Catula, 93 in Hondo. Now coming up in just a little bit, we've got some interesting and positive statistics when it comes to the rainfall that we've picked up over the past 30 days. We'll have that info for you in just a few. Thank you, Mia. Well, history is made every day and staff at the Whitty Museum are working hard to keep record of it, how they're honoring 
Texas history. Already a repository of historic artifacts and much more, the Whitty Museum is on a mission to shine a new light on the past. Yeah, and tonight's History Untold, Jesse DeGoyado tells us what the Whitty Museum wants to do exactly that. Tell the little known histories of the different people and cultures who made Texas what it is, each in their own way. The Whitty Museum has been San Antonio's portal to the past since 1926, and yet... The reality is we had to relook at what we were about and what we were about to become. Black Lives Matter and the outrage over George Floyd's death was the Whitty's wake-up call. It changed lives, it changed our lives. The Whitty may have long taken pride in being the People's Museum. Nonetheless, there's so much more work to do. We understand that there are more people that ha haven't been included in the past. For its first prototype exhibition with that in mind, the Whitty wanted to tell the story of the black cowboys of Texas. Just as well as we're telling vaquero stories or stories of other cowboys who lived and worked in Texas. And its current exhibition of Texas art is not so much about the artists themselves. But taking a look inside the paintings and seeing who's represented, what their lives might have been like, the dignity of the work that is there in the faces of the people that are represented. Already in the works at the Witty, Texas Origins brings a personal dimension to history. I think it'll be really cool seeing um, just more stories, personalized stories. How um, we came here and we prospered and how Texas is a great state. Yet the witty isn't alone in revisiting how it portrays history. Far from it. Well, it's the right thing to do. Otherwise, it's not relevant to someone. We can't learn from a history that we feel excluded from. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Some good news for you on the health front. Federal officials say no new cases of MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, have been reported in the United States for more than a week. According to the CDC, the seven-day average of new cases has reached zero since the peak of the outbreak last year. The World Health Organization declared MPOX a public health emergency of international concern in 2022. The CDC reported over 30,000 cases in the U.S. between May 2022 and April of this year, with 42 deaths linked to the virus. The last two cases were reported to the agency on April 18th. Good news on that front. Mm -hmm. On the weather front, also good news yes. in the rain department. I've been able to dump out my rain gauge a couple times this yes. year. That's good news. It means that everybody's probably had an opportunity to get some rain. A good portion of the area helping out drought conditions in some spots, yes, but really just in terms of rainfall totals itself. Take a look at these statistics from the past 30 days here at the month of April. Since April 1st, about four or three quarters of an inch there in the rain gauge here in San Antonio. That actually is well above the average amount of rainfall that we typically see here in town for the month of April. And actually, that means that we are breaking a 17 month dry spell. This month has been the rainiest since October of 2021. So that is fantastic news. Still have the month of May to go where we typically do see some additional rain and storm systems move through. And we do have some rain chances in the forecast later this week, which we'll talk all about in just a few minutes. Now, 76 degrees right now over at SA International, 72 on the south side at Stinson, 68 at Kelly, one degree shy of 70 over on the east side, Randolph. As we head into the overnight hours, again, it is going to be a cool start to your Monday morning. You will want the long sleeve stepping out for the morning dry 57 in New Braunfels as well as Pleasanton 57 over in Gonzales. That forecast morning low 62 in Carrizo Springs 55 up in Rock Springs in Edwards County. Again, I do think we will find a few more high clouds stream in from the west throughout the duration of the day. Temperatures warmer than where we should be 
for this time of year into the afternoon, upper 80s and a few low 90s certainly possible. Now we are going to be monitoring the moisture here as we head into the middle of the week. You can see by tomorrow morning dew points still in the 40s for most of us. That is very pleasant out there, which is why temperatures are going to be able to cool down just a bit more. But by Monday night, you can see, yes, this green color working its way back into the region. That is that Gulf moisture that's going to be pumping in via a southeast wind, and that's also going to affect morning low temperatures going forward. So while we're expected to bottom off in the mid 50s tomorrow morning, 65 by Tuesday, 63 Wednesday morning, and then yes, upper 60s and maybe even a few low 70s possible throughout the second half of the week. That is thanks to that Gulf moisture working back in. So more of a muggy feel in store, and that also is what's going to help kick off some of those rain chances. So we're pretty quiet right now here in South Central Texas. Zooming this out and taking a look at the weather pattern across the lower 48 low pressure system moving into the Pacific Northwest. Another one well off to our northeast sparking some rain and storms across the New England states. Over the next few days, not a whole lot going on in terms of our weather pattern here locally, but especially by Wednesday night and into early Thursday, a high pressure system is going to set up off to our south. And that means that we're going to see southwesterly flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere return. And a few disturbances, some pieces of energy are going to try and ride the western edge of that high pressure system. And when you put those disturbances together with the moisture and warmer temperatures, that means that yes, we could find a couple of isolated to scattered storm chances move in. We've got a 10% potential for your Wednesday, 30% potential as we head into Thursday and Thursday nights, and we'll be monitoring for that scattered chance for some showers and a couple of thunderstorms. Yes, temperatures in the upper 80s, even a few low 90s into early next weekend. It's going to be pretty warm out there tomorrow afternoon as well, but still that drier air will make it feel pretty nice. And of course, case that insider photo, looks like I have a notification out there on the iPad, but just want to <laughs> thank everybody for coming out to our watch parties great over the picture. past couple of days yeah. for Fiesta. We had such a great time. And it was so nice meeting everyone. Thanks for the sweet messages and all the pictures. One request from Daisy the swimming dog. Rain is fine. No more big boomers, okay? She's, <laughs> all right. she's been scared too many fair times. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you, Mia. Did the end of the month bring a new box office champ to the theaters, or did the movie that's dominated most of April keep the title, or did a Jedi and the return of that Jedi from the 1980s have anything to do with the box office results? Stay tuned. We'll find out. You will bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. The re-release of Star Wars Episode VI Return of the Jedi in fewer than 500 theaters made $4.8 million, good enough for fifth place. John Wick Chapter 4 stayed in fourth with $5 million for a domestic total of $176 million. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret debuted number three with $6.8 million. I can't believe I'm never going to speak to you. Evil Dead Rise took in $12.2 million for a second straight, second place finish. Four straight weekend wins for the Super Mario Brothers movie. $40 million gave the video game adaptation a domestic total of $490 million as the film passed the billion dollar mark in worldwide box office. In Hollywood, I'm David Dandy. A billion, a billion dollars that movie is. I, that just blew my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys gave us the best moment of the 2023 NFL draft by selecting the son of a Cowboys scout. Plus, Incarnate Word, foot, Word Football has a new head coach who's looking to keep the Cardinals as one of the top FCS teams in the nation. Let's head to Larry for more. Yeah, this guy was born to play football and he was born to coach football mm -hmm. as well. Clint Killo is from the 210 and he's more than ready to lead the UIW football team coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. To be able to mentor guys the way that I was mentored while I was here um, is, is why I do this. Clint Killo recently wrapped up his first spring camp as Cardinals head coach. He's learned a lot from the guys before him like Eric Morris and G.J. Kinney, plus lifelong lessons from his father. Tonight is part one of our sit down with Coach Killo. It feels great. I mean, to have such 
a new school and to be able to be the first is definitely special. We crown some state champions in UIL tennis this week. A singles player from Harlan and a doubles team from Bernie. These guys are good. Andrew Seeley has more on the gold medal winners. Plus, we've got the Astros, Rangers, and Missions in action. We'll recap the Cowboys and Texans draft picks, plus have that awesome moment involving Deuce Vaughn and his dad coming up right after the night beat. The coach's shirt, the word, incarnate word? Incarnate word, yes, sir. That's a, I like that. Yep. Very good. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> the word. The word. We'll be right back.